Sing City album. Yes, it is. Sorry, and can I just interrupt? I said Napoleon back. They bought Do Nelson back. Not, not Nelson. Napoleon. <laughs> <laughs> Napoleon they left over there. They took him to another place. Yeah, the victory's down there. Well, it's not the ends. I'm dyslexic. <laughs> Well, Lucy joined Lusty uh, on her journey from Portsmouth to see exactly how she managed to get here. I join HMS Illustrious as she leaves Portsmouth for her short voyage to London. Sixteen hours later, she's in the mouth of the Thames and a daunting challenge lies just ahead. I'm about to witness the ship's very difficult passage through here, the Thames Barrier. Captain Martin Connell is the man in charge. So, Captain, this is a big day for you. It is. Are you nervous? Uh, I think it's always good to have a little bit of adrenaline. Um, <laughs> nerves would be a bad thing. Um, but, no, it, it's something we've planned in some detail. So we're quite confident, particularly the pilots that we have and their expertise, that this will go entirely smoothly today. What is unique with this ship as an aircraft carrier is the bridge is displaced to starboard. So we're looking out on one side of the vessel. So as we approach the Thames barrier, I have to make sure that we line it up correctly. So we'll have about 12 meters either side, which sounds like quite a lot, but believe me when 23,000 tons is approaching the Thames barrier, that's not much room. The ship is steered from here, the bridge. As HMS Illustrious weaves her way up the Thames estuary, I get my hands on the helm, a moment to sense just how difficult it is to manoeuvre a vessel of this size. Navigator Roger. Why does it take so long? Because it's a huge, yeah, huge ship. Well, I've just had a little go steering Illustrious. It's really, really difficult. The amount of concentration needed is unbelievable. Just glad I'm not going to be in the hot seat when they are steering through the Thames barrier. It's not just about the steering. The propulsion is controlled from six decks below. Stoker Ross Drysdale is Scotty to Captain Connell's Kirk. So this is where we're driving the ship. Upstairs on the bridge, off to the watch, is using these telegraphs to ask us what sort of revolutions they want, and that'll decide on the ship's speed up at the moment at 13 knots. What happens if things get a bit hairy on the bridge? Do you notice that there's tension in their voices? Does that yeah. communicate in here? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you've got what we call conning one, which we hear announcements from the bridge. We call them pipes, and we hear that announcement, and obviously you feel the tension in the voices, and that's when we start to clutch in a bit down here, and things happen a lot quicker. As the ship approaches the Thames barrier, the captain takes up a position on the bridge roof, and the atmosphere is tense. Meanwhile, I set off in the ship's Lynx helicopter to get a really good view. How's that looking? How's that looking on port? How's that looking on port? Start the head brake engines. Hot head brake engines. How's that looking on port? How's that looking on port? It was fine, a bit closer to the port side than I'd have wished, but uh, it was safe and uh, we got through one piece. Now 